Okay, so welcome to another photo of a critique. This time we have Ito Marika, the very recently former member of Nogizaka 46. She has an interesting style to her, so I'm super curious to see what her photo book is like. The photographer for this is Oe Maki, who actually has shot the first photo book of Nogizaka, you know, them as a group. There has been a second one, but people say that the first one is better, so we shall wait and see, and see exactly how much more skill this person has gotten. So here is the photo book, so I will go ahead and take a look at this, and be able to give you guys a full critique. So looking through the photo book, it is interesting, it does still have a lot of aspects of a classic photo book, as I will mention later on but there are a little bit more interesting aspects to it which make it very Ito Marika style. I feel like a lot of recent photo books have been really tailoring themselves to the person who is in the photo book instead of making it about filling anyone here, which in my opinion is really great. But looking at this front cover, we can already see a little bit of the aspects that are going to be inside of it. This shoot right here is one of my favorites in the photo book. We will be able to see more of these later on. So in this shot, we actually see how it is actually done inside because this is kind of a touristy area. So it's pretty interesting how they accomplish this, making it just her and the background. But with this one, it's kind of obvious that there is a light shining in front of her, whether that's, it's a little green. So I imagine it's like a cheaper light. It's not something like a flash. So interesting that they went with that aspect. The green does seem to pop off a little with the red and the blue. I feel like the red and the blue kind of go together a little bit more than the green does. Maybe having that RGB element to it is something she was going for. But this dress helps attract so much of the attention over here, plus the red. Again, whenever I say there's red in like a dark spot or like somewhere where there's a lot of the same colors and then red pops out, it's super eye appealing and gets your attention right away. And turning to the back, we actually see a little bit different side of Ito Marika. A little bit more about what she has showed us because there's this side of Ito Marika and there's the fashion side, the serious side of Ito Marika. There's a lot of different sides to Ito Marika, so she is more of a round person. And I feel like this back cover and front cover comparison is actually a good example of that. And looking at the inside cover, we get to see it's her goofing off while getting ready for the shoot and her just smiling. And if we open it up, it is actually a big long one over here. So we get to see she's in a restaurant and she's about to have a shoot. We get to see someone's arm over here. Maybe they could have cropped that off a little. But yes, it's bringing both of the personalities we saw from the front side and the back side together, having the fashionable, goofy Ito Marika. So starting it off, we get to see a little bit of words here. Now again, Japanese is not the best <laughs> for me. So if you know what this says, please comment down below. It'll help introduce the photo book with just this because when we turn to the next page, we get a nice establishing shot of the area of Hong Kong where this photo book was taken. And something that'll come into play later on is the fact that they're on the side where there's ferries and boats. So turning to the next page, since this established the next shoot we get over here where it's night. So following that night of stab all the way to over here where she's walking around at night. Now this photo over here is too blurry because of the low shutter speed because it's so dark over here and I imagine they didn't want to raise the ISO a whole bunch. But then right here she's standing perfectly still so it comes out nice and sharp and even though this paper is kind of cheap and it's kind of matte, still looks a little bit sharp but stuff like this where it's a little bit blurry really looks blurry. Oh, and you guys know how I love the kick lights or the highlights around the hair. Right here we have a nice red over here, separating her a lot from the background, so that's really nice. And then we move on to the transition page again, which is her going in a taxi to her next location. Now, there is this whole white page right here. I don't know if this is like, we couldn't find a transition for it. It's like, this is the only thing we could do and we didn't just want to go to the next page and started off over here we wanted it to be like a nice break open which reminds me 
this is why you want to pick up a photo book because of stuff like this the little details like this where they want to stop you from watching this series to when you flip the next page go to the next series meanwhile if you're just scrolling through pictures you don't really get that sense and you don't really get the stoppage so i imagine this is for stoppage because i can think of no other reason why this white page will be here i don't think it's a mistake so that's my reasoning for it i mean it would have been better just to have like a blurry thing over here of like the background right because next we move on to this scene over here which is her in the town again but in a different area this photo is really cool to me this is very contrasty and you can see that there's a very harsh light on her, very hard light. And it really adds to the drama thanks to the shadows that are on her face. It kind of makes her look like one of those underdog superheroes that's kind of bad. I don't know if it's the whole fur coat covering her or if it's like the hair being wet with the dark shadows. Then right here we get a little bit of drunk Itomarika. <laughs> This is, this is a pretty funny image and this gets included in different spots in the photo book. So this will be a theme you see later on which I'm really glad they continued showing that they actually thought into the photo shoots and were able to think ahead. And also I just noticed this little detail, the arrows pointing straight at her nose. Probably She probably picked it, she's like, yeah, I want that one in there. Next we get one of the few eating ones that are in here. It's her at this yellow restaurant so that we showed on the inside cover. These aren't the best this one's like blurry this one's her kind of like in a model -y pose but then kind of throwing it off with the lip thing i don't know how much it works but i think i like this one the most because it's kind of like her looking at the reflection then looking back at you kind of like what are you doing with a very serious face it makes it look a little bit natural but then like all the pose is there not like this one where it's a little bit more intentional posing and they try to throw it off a little then we have this one, which might be my favorite shot of the photo book because of two reasons. Number one, she's covered in light while everything else is in darkness. And we even get a second layer of lightness over here, making it feel less like a picture that's flat and more 3D. But something else that I really like is this square right here with a whole bunch of sticks and plastic bags over here, framing her very nicely. And having this in a photo book is really nice. We've seen it before, I've highlighted it before. But this is always really good to see that shows that the photographer really has an eye for these things. I'm kind of curious what would happen if her head was in the light area, kind of like if you moved a little bit more this way. I'm curious to see how that would have turned out. Then we have a little bit more posing, then going to a little bit goofy. I feel like I would usually say stick with this one. But looking at these two, you kind of make the compare and contrast of seeing both of them next to each other. Although I think their color they're retouched a little bit different like the blacks in this one are a little bit different than the blacks in this one because if you look at the hair that's like the major factor that throws everything off i don't know if this was a little bit closer to the lights and this was a little bit farther it might be it might be that because i'm looking at the shadow over here and this one looks a little bit harsher than this one so i think right here she was a little bit closer to the lights and we get this nice big spread image of her face but then we also get nice little details around her again if it's light it attracts a lot of attention but then if it's all light and there's a dark spot that attracts the attention too it's whatever is different and in this case it's her hair and her eyes that really attract it and then we get to the nice transition which is very blue but then when we go to the next one we get a little bit of blue left i like that they didn't like make these sheets completely white just so we could transition from the other page so very nice touch on that point like sometimes you don't have to be technically perfect sometimes you can see stuff like this and just appreciate it and then starting from this one we move on to a little bit more dicey images it's not too bad like trust me this is still like like pretty tame but for this one it's actually focused on the window and not on her unfortunately so it's, it's a very it's a very tiny thing of difference. I imagine this was at a lower aperture because it's so dark here. So I can see how this can happen. But this is such a nice expression that I understand why they kept this photo. Next is this image right here. I, From the looks of it, it looks like they only tried to get this image because there's no other image of her with this or in this pool. So I imagine they were going for the attention of getting this and this is really nice. I wish she was wearing green but I see why she was wearing red, because red is kind of like going with the blue over here. She was wearing green, it kind of would have looked like a lily pad. 
So it has its pros and cons, and I imagine she wanted to go a little bit more of the color route rather than the imagery route. But it's a very nice, very somber expression from her, and it's very relaxed while her arms are out, kind of spreading her body a little bit, making, again, that somber look feel real. Now, for some reason, I really like this image. I think I like this image because of the lighting that's going on. It's her face turning over here, but the light's coming in from over here, kind of giving like a little Rembrandt lighting. So it's a really nice soft lighting, especially with her being a little bit under the shade. So with this very nice lighting and it makes everything else look a little bit darker, but then her face look a little bit more highlighted and that way causing more attention to the face and causing a really nice shape to her face as you can see from the shadows over here, causing her cheekbone to look bigger, etc. Next we get a little bit more goofy Ito Marika with her walking on over here outside of the flower shop and then over here revealing that she got in flower. Again, these images aren't like the best, but it is kind of telling a story, which we move on to the next page. It's her like showing off the flower. I actually like the expression that she has here, kind of like a punk kid. So it's really a nice expression right here. Now, this shoot is the one that I was really excited for. When I saw previews of this, I just wanted to see this one right away. And just looking at these two right here are very fashionable poses. This one right here being my favorites. It's her on top of a ladder looking away. Very like sailor-esque, but then a little bit more like a fashion appeal to it. And then this one right here, her lifting up her legs a lot and, you know, showing off them ab works and having a little bit more angles over here, having angles all over the place, even with both of these, making it very fashionable. Fashion is a little bit more angular than it is curvy so taking all this into effect i can see exactly where she was going for when she did these poses real quick i just want to mention this one looks like futari saizon <laughs> if only it was like a little bit more warm <laughs> then move on to some interesting images because right here we see her at a fish shop and wearing a little bit more traditional clothes but you're adding a little twist of it by adding a red dress thing to it a red top that is a skirt as well I don't really know my clothing articles for a woman, so... But yes, this is actually a very really interesting fashion direction that she's heading towards, especially with all this environment around her. So yeah, super nice, and plus the greens right here with the greens, and the reds with the reds. All just comes together really, really nicely. I really like this photo right here. This one, it shows a little bit more like trying to head towards the direction, but I don't think they exactly nailed it. And here we go, a little bit more of this color. Right here, we can see that there's so much blue around that it kind of reflects on this black or dark colored jackets that it makes it look a little bit blue, causing the fish and the water and every other detail that's in here to be highlighted more with what she's wearing. All of this colors right here really combine it really nicely. The green throws me off a little bit, but it's not too bad. So then, yes, we have the return of drunk Ito Marika with her over here with this older gentleman over here on the side kind of showing the contrast of like how tired she is meanwhile he's over here you know just going on his phone having a good old time but then she's over here <laughs> pretty much dead now this one i first saw it kind of scared me this one looks like it's straight from a horror film like an old horror film that's four by three this is what this reminds me of now i want to talk about this expression that she has right here this is a very unique expression we don't see a lot in photo books this is kind of like i don't even know how to describe it kind of like empty this is a very empty empty look this seems like there's nothing going on and it's really hard to pull off this look there's a lot of fashion people who do this for a living and do this type of look when they need to but it's really hard to perfect and I think right here is a really good example of having the very empty face now whether it's fitting for this image or not I think it adds interest although I don't think it's the most necessary pose to have then we have a series of another hotel this time it's more yellow than it is blue from the other one but we have her right here kind of like getting her back. I feel like this photo book has had some little hints of depression in there. It might just be me, but I feel like a couple of the photos that we've seen have hinted at it a little. But we have her scratching her back and we have this big old opening over here from the shower, kind of like someone wiped it along just to see her. I kind of wish it was like her that did it and just went 
straight down and we got to see like a glimpse of just like her hand right here just going down and kind of like just seeing the important details but yet still kind of getting like a little bit hint of skin and everything like that but then something right after this is hey look at this that double white page um this one the only reason i could think is the same thing as before where they wanted to separate these scenes from the next scenes and then right here they didn't want to start with an image straight out of the gate and they have this image as a filler and then this white but then why couldn't they have just gone straight to this one right here it's kind of confusing maybe they wanted this to be more of an establishing shots kind of like set the environments kind of like it's a little, little bit unorganized and separating it that way you get to the next page and it's a full page spread after you get these two white pages hopefully they thought that way hopefully this wasn't a mistake but yes we get her in this environment which is very different from the rest of the photo book this is her laying down eating some what looks like chips and then her over here laughing like crazy so it's very different kinds of images and very different aspect ratios and i can only imagine this was on purpose to have it like this have these two pictures right next to each other kind of showing like the different stages that someone can go through because at this point this isn't about what she's wearing this is about the expression and the environment that she's in next up we get these two shots there has been a preview shot of one of these before but it's not included in the actual photo book but this is kind of like her the vibe i get from this is her like if she was living there and this is the kind of vibe I get because it's kind of like the shirt's a little bit loose. It's her wearing sandals. She's getting a grocery bag. That's the vibe I get from this. And I think this this image right here especially displays this a lot. It's kind of like, all right, I'm tired, but you know, I have to go home and cook. And this image right here, her being in the shadows, is actually nice because again, we do get that framing over here. And we get to see her inside of it. And we even get like a little bit more with these in here. So it's kind of interesting in that aspect. I'm sorry, I just have to mention this one. This one's just too funny. Her trying to carry all those mangles around. I'm super glad they added this photo book in there. There are a lot of fun photos in here, and this is just one of them. Like this one, where she probably doesn't understand the menu. And even this one, again, where she's trying on clothes, being her goofy self. Then we get to this page over here, and this page is really interesting because first image looks like Ita Marika, Second image, I do not get Ito Marika vibe at all. She looks like a completely different person. Like the only reason why I know it's her is because of the mark right there and because of her nose. So this is like a different side of Ito Marika that we haven't seen. It would have been cool to see a little bit more of this side in different spots in the photo book. I don't know, but this image right here, pose wise, is very, very, very like photo shoot magazine pose. Like with the leaning over here, with the little S curve, with the posing of the face, showing the pinky sign like I always say. And there's a lot of things here that just scream like, bam, 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 you're hitting all of the marks for like a magazine shoot. And especially for something very close up to the face, but then adding the shape to it really adds a lot and the environment she's in kind of throws it a little bit off, which is nice. She looks a little bit different here. I don't know what it is. Is it because she's not like, I don't even know. If you guys can guess why she looks a little bit different, it might be the bangs. Let me know down in the comments. And then right away to the next page, we get a different side of Ita Marika again with her sitting at the window shield. Kind of reminds me of like Inception, but with her hair all the way back. No, no bangs or anything. Very, very clean. And then her wearing a dress that we haven't really seen her wear before. And this image right here being really nice. This looks really, really elegant. This looks like it could be made for an earring ad in a magazine. Even cropped in like this, it still looks really good without all of this in here. I feel like if they cropped in a little bit more, it would have been a little bit too much ad-like, so they kept it a little bit more out. They moved to the transition page, which is actually black and white, a little throwback to Wakatsuki's photo book where there were some images in black and white. But this is the next scenario, which will lead us into the front cover. That's not the front cover, but it's the environment where she was for the photo shoots of the front cover. So we see her leaning over here. Shutter speed is a little slow, but it still works out in this one because it's not meant to be completely in focus as we can see with everything over here and her face being a little bit out of focus and then right here we get the front image but then right here we get a really nice slow shutter speed photo 
which I imagine was the reason why the other photo was blurry. So right here we get to see the dress flying through and with the very slow shutter speed we get to see that it's all whipping around and this must have been hard because this seems like a double exposure because her arm's going away. So it's a little bit of a mix of both. So it's really interesting to see them actually do this kind of work for the photo book and a lot of props for trying new things and I think this worked out really good. Then we get a block of text over here. That's a lot of writing. Then move on to her on the boats, kind of like we did in the beginning where there was a boat, she was, it was at the pier and now we get to finish it with her on a boat, presumably leaving. Maybe this is a symbol for her leaving the group and crying about it. Again, just continuous images of her crying. Uh, that's really all these pages have been. And then we get over here with her crying and reaching out. There must be a lot of symbology behind this image. I don't really know. This must be inside of Ito Marika's mind about what this image means because not knowing her, I can't really say what this image represents for her because I feel like this means more than what you can see right here. Especially following a lot of the crying ones on a boat going away. I feel like there's a lot of strong emotions toward this. And then we go to the next page, which is kind of like memories. So maybe it's like her reaching out to different memories that she's had over the trip, or this could be like symbol for her memories in general. And I mean, just to mention, there's a lot of great images in here that I wish were actually in the photo book. We have this one right here, which is one of my favorites. We have this one, her looking at the fish, which is really interesting. Even this one of her reaching inside the refrigerator is really nice. So a lot of these images I feel like could have filled up those blank pages. And then finally we get off to her laughing it off and being like, man, it's gonna be all right. I'm Ito Marika, right? So yes, very nice finisher. Left off on a very good note. Although it's not the best image, it's still left off with the feeling that everything is going to be all right. And that has been Ito Marika's photo book. I hope you enjoyed the photo book critique. And if you enjoyed the photo book, definitely pick it up. I recommend all fans of Nogizaka to pick it up. It's definitely something interesting to see from her perspective and I think there's a lot of symbology in it that will actually make you feel a little bit what Ito Marika is feeling. So if what I said interests you, you can go ahead and buy it. And if you want to see other photo book critiques that I have done, you can go ahead and check those out in my channel and subscribe to keep up to date when I do new photo book critiques as well as the weekly videos that I do about the news that is going on. I also have a podcast about Nogizaka and Kiyakizaka, which you can go ahead and check out in the link below. Long talks, fun episodes, special guests. So you just have to watch and see who they are and you can go ahead and like this video. Leave a comment down below about what you thought about the photo book. If you picked it up, let me know what your thoughts are. Maybe some specific pictures so that I can look at it and talk to you about it. That'll be fun. And again, share the video and thanks for watching as always.